Probably one of the most popular questions that people ask is like, but do, does the narcissist believe it? Do they believe when they're lying? Or like, how can they do that when they know they're wrong? Like I'm showing them they're wrong. Like how can they actually believe that they're telling the truth when they're obviously not? If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, change, and development. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the 45-day clarity challenge, and also Escape Toxicity, the seven-day challenge to healing. If you like what we see here, talking about narcissism, narcissistic abuse, my journey in narcissism, hit subscribe, hit that notification so you get notified when we go live and do Q and A's, when we drop new videos daily. Now, when we're talking about this aspect of narcissist lies, like, did you have someone that you trusted that lied to you? Have you had someone who has betrayed you and left you alone and confused and you're left like, what in the world happened and how could they believe that? Because I know that wasn't true. They know it wasn't true. Like, but they seem to believe it so much that they almost had me starting to believe that it was true. Well, it's not new news to be able to say that narcissists lie. They do. And I want to be able to walk through some of the aspects about narcissists lying, how they actually believe it, like what's going on there, and what you can do. There's different types of lies when we talk about dealing with a narcissist, dealing with a toxic person. You've got the regular lie that's just like, oh, I'm going to lie to you. I'm just going to tell you, no, that didn't happen. Then you have lies of omission, where I don't tell you, no, that didn't happen. I just tell you about something else. I just distract you or deflect the conversation so that you don't have a clue that what you're asking is actually something that I don't want to admit because I'm either ashamed about it, or I feel guilt about it, or I just got what I wanted and I didn't want to tell you about it. I wanted to get away with it. So you have these lies that are just overt, just nope, didn't do that. And then you have those lies that are covert on like the omission side of like, oh, I did this, but what about this? Oh, I did this. And we just like a distraction kind of a thing. Then you have gaslighting, which is taking the lies to a whole nother level that's saying, no, I didn't do this. And yes, even though you saw that, like that didn't actually happen. Like maybe we need to check out your eyesight. You know, maybe we need, like you've got an overactive imagination to be believing that I'd be cheating on you. Yes, you saw me with another person and I was making out with them, but like that's just, that's just a little ridiculous. Like gaslighting is switching around where it's a lie, but then it's adding crazy making to it. Like you're crazy and you don't actually know what you're talking about because you, you saw something that didn't actually happen. Like it's trying to make the other person feel insane. Okay, so we've got different lies. We've got Darvo, where a person's like deflecting, running away from it. We've got gaslighting. We've got the future faking. We've got all the different things to try to get to the place of saying like, hey, I didn't do this because I don't want to own up to it. Sometimes you have the lies that are automatic. Nope, that didn't happen. What are you talking about? And then you have the ones that are constant every single time, pathological and also intentional. Sometimes narcissists oscillate back and forth between automatic and intentional. Was that lie intentional? Well, no. Was this lie intentional? Well, yes. Okay. And they just happen. Boom, 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 boom. Sometimes it's like an automatic like knee-jerk response of like, no, that didn't happen. And then it's like, crap, now I have to intentionally lie to make sure I'm getting away from the lie that I just told so I don't get caught. And it's this like continuation, the cycle that happens over and over and over. So why do they lie? What's the point? Well, there's an aspect of a need to control. Like as a narcissist, my thought process is I have to control the mass, the view that other people are getting. So as a result, I need to lie. I need to lie about the shit that's inside to be able to say, nope, that's not who I am. I'm a good person. I'm a happy person. I'm a, I'm a content person. I'm a nice person. And put that out there so that people view a certain thing, but not the shit that's actually underneath. And I did that for years. I did that for years because I would rather lie than be accountable or responsible for the actions that I'd done, for how I'd shown up in my marriage, in my life, in my church, in my family, in my work, all those different things. I didn't want to own up who I actually was and what I was actually doing. And as a result, the narcissist ends up controlling you. Oftentimes, the narcissist is not dead set on controlling you. They're dead set on controlling their mass, their image, their money, and what they get. And as a result, you normally end up being the consequence of what they want. And so they end up controlling you. A lot of times people don't realize that sometimes in a narcissistic relationship, it doesn't have anything to do about you. All it has to do is with them, and you're a side effect of what they want. And so as a result, they run over and they manipulate you time and time again. 
And when we're talking about this, this need for control, Narcissus builds this distorted view of reality. And it leaves you doubting yourself, feeling confused, left powerless, and not sure what to do because they've developed this different view of reality. And they're like, this is me. So I need to control everything to see it how I see it. As a result, it starts to produce cognitive dissonance. When you can't determine the truth because you have two opposing thoughts. Do I believe their words? Do I believe their actions? Do I make this decision and have them yell at me? Do I make this decision and have them give me silent treatment? Like, which do I actually do? And you're left in this limbo land, not sure how to be able to process forward, how to be able to live. And it leaves you confused. It leaves you crazy. It leaves you bonded to that person and you develop an addiction. Part of the reason why people struggle to get out of a narcissistic relationship is they do not realize that they are addicted to that person. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person because this happened. It means you got in a toxic relationship that slowly developed over time to be the place that you feel like you can't get free. That's why I work with people every single day to help them break free of the trauma bond. Almost like the Stockholm Syndrome of being in love with their abuser. We help people get freedom and get clarity because the narcissist will confuse you because they lie to keep you in control. They lie to keep you in the dark. They lie to to dominate, to hide. So how do they actually believe it? How's that possible? The first aspect is distorting reality. When I was cheating and when I was lying and when I was doing these things to my wife, I didn't want to believe that. I wanted to believe I'm a good person because even though I cheat, I still come home. Even though I am not faithful to my wife, I still pay the bills. Very skewed up way of thinking. But it's this idea of like, I am a perfect person. I'm infallible. Like there's, there's nothing wrong about me. I'm a good guy. We're telling people I'm a good person. And a lot of times thinking that that image defines me when that image was just a facade. That image was just something I was projecting out to the world to see and it wasn't actually who I was. So Narcissus is living with this distorted reality of like I have to put up a false image and I can't actually show people the shit that's inside. How they also believe it is through denial or rationalization. At this point, it's like, I have to justify my behavior. I have to justify the shit that I'm doing. I have to say, oh, it's okay. It's okay that I'm doing this because, here's here's one of the biggest lies for guys. It's okay that I'm doing this because my needs aren't being met. It's a bunch of bullshit. The whole, woe is me because I'm not getting what I want from my partner. And so as a result, I'm going to coerce or I'm going to cheat. That's typically the options that they have. And all that's left is a person who is a coward that doesn't want to show up in the relationship as a man. And as a person who's willing to step up and actually be honest and vulnerable about the stuff that's going on. Not just, oh, my needs aren't getting met. We see that so many times when a narcissist is producing an unsafe environment where another person's even body is shutting down because they know this is not a safe environment and they can't either do what the person wants, produce, whatever it might be. But oftentimes that's one of the lies. One of the other lies is like, I don't want to tell the other person because I don't want to hurt them. Because I care about them so much, I just don't want to to tell them because that's going to hurt them too much. Again, another huge lie. But it's rationalization. Like, hey, I can build a relationship on lies. It's totally fine because it's not going to hurt them that way. And then they find out eventually and they realize, wait a second, the person that I fell in love with doesn't even exist. Because they're unwilling to be honest and transparent about who they actually were and what was actually going on. One of the biggest lies that a narcissist can tell you is like, well, I didn't tell you because I didn't want to hurt you. No, they didn't want to tell you because one, they don't care about you. And two, because telling you would bring about shame and guilt. And three, doing that would actually be accountable and responsible. And that would have to produce some change or some aspects of guilt to be able to produce more change. And that sounds a little too hard. So they distort reality, denial, rationalization, and they twist the truth. I typically say a narcissist doesn't have a rock bottom. They have a pivot. They have a twist to get to the place of saying, I'm the victim. Like, it's actually, you know what? Yeah, you're right. It's actually my fault. It can't be my fault. So that actually happened. I'm the victim. 
Like, I can't believe they did that to me. They left me in my time of need just when I was finally changing. I mean, yeah, I, I cheated 20 times and yeah, I'm like changing on the like the 500th time now that you've told me that you're leaving. And like all this starts to change around and the person becomes the victim of like, I'm the victim. I can't believe this. They start to twist the truth. They start to give half truths to other people. They start to mislead. They start to do smear campaigns, anything like that to justify in their mind that it's okay, that I'm not the bad guy. All right, so last but not least, walking into it, what can you do? Need you understand, first off, you're like, you can't stop them and you can't fix them. Like, you can't get another person to believe a reality that they're unwilling to, re- to believe exists. They're unwilling to acknowledge because of the shame, because of the guilt, because of the lack of accountability and responsibility. You are unable to do that. And you stop trying. It is not your job to fix another person. Now, whether that's a savior complex or whether that's an ego trip or whether that's something that you feel so much in love, you have to be able to help another person, totally get that. But you're also not helping yourself. And as a result, you're not in a place that you have the, even the capacity to lead another person, much less help save them. You need to understand first off that you're in a game. You are in a game with a narcissist. And the thing is, you get trapped you see, you get trapped when you play by their rules. When you say, oh, I'm going to do this, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. I'm getting that admiration. You're like, what? Forget this. You're an awful person. Oh, yeah, great, this admiration. Like, you're in a game. You're not going to win when you play by their rules. The only way that you win is by not playing. You can't win at a game that doesn't have rules, and you can't win at a game that the rules that are created change dramatically every single day based on how the other person feels because you're never going to fit the mold that they want you to fit in, especially if you're healing, especially if you're growing. So a lot of times we have this aspect of you need to understand you're in a game. You need to set limits of what you accept and of what you believe. You need to question truth, question reality to find out what is actually going on. You need to find out who you are, the direction that you need to go. Because right now, a lot of times you believe a lie because you don't know who you are and you don't know what's true. And you're left wandering through the fog thinking maybe this could get better and you're not sure how to be able to do it because you're not sure who you are. Today, I want to challenge you to be able to join us in the 45-Day Clarity Challenge. Registrations are open for a few days here, and to be able to offer you the opportunity to step in with multiple survivors from across the globe to be able to start walking through a systematic process to find you, to find out who you are, the direction you need to go, to be able to build healthy boundaries, to be completely broken free of that trauma bond, to be able to rewire the story that's in your mind that keeps playing, that keeps you trapped and keeps you stuck. There is freedom out there. That freedom is meant for you. But it depends on if you're willing to accept it and if you're willing to invest in you. I hope you're willing to do that today. You can go to claritychallenge.net and be able to access that. If you have questions or if you want to interact or if you want to talk to me personally, you can go to rawmotivations.com, click on one-on-ones. We'd love to be able to help you out. Thanks so much for listening today. Y'all have a blessed day. 